Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is my third attempt at recording this, so we'll see how this one goes. Basically, what's going on here is my name is Scott. I go by Vorlin on the X Plane forums and by NCD on the Hover Control forums. Let's go back in where it's quiet. Um, all right, short version is that hover control is a great, well-structured place to learn how to fly helicopters. Um, it has instructors, it has uh, experienced people who have been practicing for a long time. There is a structure in their website with tips and information, um, practice uh, exercises, and an actual certified pilot test and check ride. It's a great place. But unfortunately, um, it has not been as busy as it used to be. Uh, there used to be a lot of hangout time, and from what I understand now, uh, instead of everybody hanging out together, they do a lot more of their instruction one-on-one -on -one in the cockpit, which is great. It gives much more personalized instruction, but it takes away a lot of the social aspect of uh, what it what the place was and I don't think that the one-on-one -on -one instruction was ever intended to do that uh, just kind of a consequence I guess now on the other hand X-Plane I have not been able to find any kind of structure at all um, no places to practice that are set up there's no uh, exercises there's no hanging out together and giving each other tips uh, nothing so, you know, with hover control, not as busy as it used to be, and it could definitely use a shot in the arm, and X-Plane needing that structure, this looks like a natural fit. Okay, the only issue that I can see is that hover control uses a, flight, a uh, Microsoft only uh, type setup. Now, we could join their server if we could find an adapter. Uh, but unfortunately, JoinFS is not ready for X-Plane yet, although it may be in the fall. If that happens, then the X-Plane people would be able to join Hover Control Server. That'll be great. Um, until then, the only practical solution really is VATSIM. Uh, the other possibility would be Pilot Edge, but that is payware, and you have to pay a subscription. So I really don't see a lot of people doing that. So right now, what we're looking at is VATSIM or VATSIM. Um, and, you know, I just, I hope people make the best with that, that they come out and hang out together. But, uh, you know, there are some people who just don't want to do it. And, well, we just got to keep moving on and, you know, get together the people that we can. In any event, we're going to take a look here at the two practice areas that I've put together laminar research that is really creepy please make grazing deer not the strange hopping things that stare at you as they go by anyhow um where was i oh yes practice areas the typical traditional practice area for hover control has always been kmso missoula montana uh, it's a really nice area nice airport things are set up there uh, the only problem I can see with that is that with VATSIM, I'm afraid that area may come uh, under the uh, purview of controlled airspace more often than not. Whereas New Zealand uh, is almost always uncontrolled airspace, which means we can pretty much do whatever we want. Nobody's going to care. Uh, so I'm making both. You know, if we're able to fly at Missoula, that's great. Um, if not, we've also got this, and we'll be taking a look at both of them. So, without further ado, let's take a quick peek. And something that we do with the 429s, we sit her back up on the skids. Let's see if I'm trimmed. Uh, something almost maybe close. All right. First things first, hover control people, don't laugh at me. I took my certified pilot exam in like 2006. Yes, I'm rusty. I'm extremely rusty. So, don't laugh. Um, 
for the explain people. I will show you some of the exercises in general. You'll get what I mean by them. Okay, yes, I put that house there. I will have to adjust it. Um, now, for anybody who might help me make this scenery for Flight Simulator, you have the coordinates of the runway. What you don't have is basically this here. And this is really nothing other than a uh, taxiway that needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, um, eye candy is really just whatever you want to do with it. Don't try to replicate this perfectly. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that there's a GA spawn point right there and there's a runway right there. All right, moving on. To the other important things here, the practice exercises. Now these right here, these little gray squares are just spawn points, all three of them. Try not to fly into the wires. And here we have the practice area. There are, <coughs> excuse me, it's not exactly like Missoula. We have five hover circles and one set of boxes and one set of pylons. Now these hover circles, in essence what you're doing is you're going to fly at 15 feet and you're going to keep the entire aircraft, rotors included, inside the circle. Okay, not You can start out with just the body of your aircraft, but over time you should definitely be able to keep your entire aircraft in the circle at all times at 15 feet. Now, I kind of cheated a little bit here, and I gave us some trees. Okay, now, if you're looking, I'm not where I need to be. That's getting closer. Should be something about right here. Good God, I'm unstable. <laughs> yeah, I'm extremely rusty, as I said. And it's not helping that I'm only getting about 20 frames per minute, or per second. But, you get the general idea. 15 feet, everything within the uh, circle. So again, like this one right here, you would come in. This is a little bit rougher than it was with my field of view the way I like it. In fact, I may change that. In fact, I will change that. But, quick check, I'm not even close to where I need to be. So, it's just me. I turn my field of view up to about 100. It allows me to see a little better, as you can tell. Now, if you're looking at the 429's uh, attitude indicator, and you're wondering why I'm sitting here at 5 degrees up, that's just the way she sits when she's hovering. Okay, And it's nice having these trees right here. Then you've got something to look at and reference off of. I put the trees there specifically for that. Now, the boxes. The way that they do them, there's two things that you can do with the boxes. One is you hover at 15 feet, and this is going to be a joke. Don't laugh. Um, <laughs> Okay, you hover at 15 feet, and you stop. Okay, now once you're stopped, you don't go backwards like that. Once you're stopped, you very slowly creep forward into the next box, which is no problem, right? Now you stop. But once you're stopped in the box, what you want to do at that point, yes, I know, I need to go up further. Um, once you do at that point is you slip 
Okay, now this can be a bit of a pain. Come on. And you need to slip smoothly at 15 feet. Okay, and then come to a stop more gracefully than that. And then you back up at 15 feet very slowly. Do not go into ATL and rise up like that. Okay, you get the idea. Okay, now another way to do this is to hover in the box and what you do is you turn inside the box very slowly and you stay in the box while you're doing this. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I actually did pass a test doing this a long time ago and to give you an idea when I passed the test my rudder was actually a second stick laying on the ground under my desk. Whoops. Okay, then you go up here and actually you turn the other. Yeah. You get the idea. You turn and you go to each box and you sit in the box at 15 feet. When I took my test, uh, I had a second stick underneath the desk with a broom handle taped to it and that's what I used for pedals. Um, it was kind of humorous especially because the whole rig slid to one side while I was on uh, while I was on the downwind. And so it made hitting the numbers on my landing very interesting. Now this right here, this is called the pylons. Now again, don't laugh. But the idea here is that you fly the pylons at 30 knots smoothly around all four of them. Notice I'm doing, well, I'm doing more than 30 knots. Bad pilot, no donut. I'm doing quite a bit more than 30 knots. But you see the general idea. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and practice and try to get this just right. What I'm doing is I'm showing you what to do yourself. Now, in the Missoula scenery, I have not yet been able to get the pylons implemented because I don't know where they are. Um, I have asked some people to try to get the coordinates. Um, Alt-T, by the way, in X-Plane is your friend. Click it three times, now you're six times ground speed, and it doesn't really hurt your frame rate. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't have the pylons hooked up yet for our KMSO scenery over here. Um, but this is the last piece of the X-Plane scenery that I want to show you. We have a small carrier group out here with three frigates and an aircraft carrier. And yes, it is possible to spawn on the carrier or one of the frigates. Hey, I said stop. There we go. So. Okay, I guess we'll buzz the aircraft carrier first, even though I wanted to buzz the frigate first. Okay, I was wrong on both counts. <laughs> okay, where's my ship? There she goes. 